How's it going? Didn't see you guys there. <laughs> I'm just hanging out with my good friend, Mr. Cruz Campo. Enjoying a nice little, well, Cruz Campo down at the beach here in beautiful sunny Rincón de la Victoria. Let's go to Malaga. I know, Rincón is better than Malaga. And like, honestly, the bus, it was sweaty. There was no seats. I was standing. You had to wear a mask. It was like 30 minutes in a torture pit. You guys look pretty cool on the camera. I like this whole like little alleyway. Yeah. The boys, the ninos of uh, Rincón de la Victoria, sponsored by Rockstar. And this guy's got New York on his shirt. My favorite one. Rincón is the best. Better than the rest. <laughs> it's the ultimate test. <laughs> Look at that sailboat. <laughs> On the crest. Hola. 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 We make rap video. I almost feel foolish that I was even considering going to Malaga at one point. Look at that. We got beach football. We got chiringuitos as far as the eye can see. A lovely day by the sea. Rincón de la Victoria. Here it is. Here it is. Here's the town. Here's the town. And we can see the waves and the boats. And it was on a boat just like this that Tariq came over from the Maghreb in the year 711. And that is our topic of discussion today. The Moorish conquest of Spain in the early 8th century. Bar La Lonia II. Cruz Campo Bar. Now at the beginning of the 8th century, all of Spain including this here region of Andalusia, was ruled by the Visigoths. Oh, this bar is a little bit confused. They've got the Estrella Galicia glasses, the Cruz Campo sign outside, and Alhambra beer, a triple threat. And the king of the Visigoths was a man by the name of Witizia. And Witizia, he was kind of a tyrannical leader. And so this bloke, this fella, this individual, who went by the moniker Roderick, or as the Spanish called him, Rodrigo. He defeated Witizia, and he killed him, and he took over for the kingdom all on his own. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Okay, this is like a fancy little place here. Hola, uh, caña, por favor. Uh, Victoria, Malaga. Victoria. Gracias. Uh, I think Boti. Oh no, uh, caña, caña, caña. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Uh, how much? Look at this. Nice little touch there. They give you some nuts and a uh, gummy bears. Victoria, Malaga. The local cerveza. Holy shit. Oh, oh. So Spain back then was pretty much what we think of it today. The Iberian Peninsula, including Portugal actually. And then across the Straits of Hercules, an ever shrinking strip of Northwest Africa, which at this point had shrunk down to pretty much just the cities of Ceuta and Molina, which are Spanish today, by the way. And the man in charge of that territory was a Visigothic governor by the name of Julian. And Julian ruled from his seat in Ceuta. And Julian had a daughter named Florinda, a nubile, young, beautiful daughter. And he sent her over the sea into Spain under the guidance and paternal guardianship of Roderick, the king of the Visigoths. The town mosaic, some Spanish that I can't understand. Beautiful colors, blues and yellows. This is the main square. On my first day here, there was a bit of a puppet show going on. No one's gonna stop for me because it's not that type of crosswalk. You have to wait for the light to turn. La 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 la. And now it will turn. Yes, there we go. This is the Plaza Al Andalus. Al Andalus, of course, the Moorish name of Spain. And that is the story we are continuing with now. Excuse me. How the Moors conquered what was soon to become known as Al Andalus. So Florinda, she comes to the courts of Don Roderick. And basically back then, the queen, Exelona, and her courtiers, her maidens, they lived in sort of a harem type of place, a palace separate from the main castle. And they all sort of just spent their time whiling away in their silks by the fountains and living in a state of sort of luxurious indolence, let's just say. 
And Florinda, she comes, she's very innocent, she's very naive. And one day, the girls are playing a little game to try to see who's more beautiful. The Muslim, Mauritanian, Moorish princesses that came over with Exilona, or the native Iberian Visigothic Spaniards. And they're saying, oh, who's more beautiful, who's more beautiful? And there's a Mauritanian, a Moorish beauty with olive colored skin verging into dark caramel. And she's got supple little breasts and beautiful eyes. And she is held up as the most beautiful. And the Spaniards say, what can we do? We don't have anyone that beautiful. And then they see the sleeping Florinda and they say, wait a minute. She's pretty beautiful, but she's sleeping. Start taking off her clothes, everyone's naked. And who's spying on this whole thing happening? The little pervy man himself, Roderick. And he sees Florinda getting stripped down and he falls madly in love or in lust or in sort of <laughs> creepy, illegal, I'm supposed to be your father, jailbait's disgustingness. But whatever you want to call it, he's got it. Downtown Rincon. Oh, a Holideria, that's an ice cream shop. I've learned a lot here in Spain. I'm starting to pick up on their way of life. I like it. It's very uh, blissful. Cafe Brooklyn, what do we got here? Cafe Brooklyn. Never feel far from home as a New Yorker. So Roderick, he says to Florinda, come here. I've got a thorn in my finger. It hurts, please take it out for me. Florinda looks down, no thorn. What are you talking about, Roderick? The thorn is in my heart and it's because I love you so much. She's freaked out. You know, this guy's basically supposed to be her dad. She tries to play dumb. Roderick says, you're irresistible. I need to have you. Long story short, he rapes her. She's distraught, she's upset. He's beseeched to file her honor. She knows that this means the end of her life as a young nubile virgin. Her innocence is tarnished. Her family's name is in tatters. And she writes a letter, a secret letter, to her father, Don Julian, and says, Julian, I was raped. So Julian, he's in a rage. He's in an absolute rage. And the first thing he does, he goes over to the leader of the Arab forces, a man by the name of Musa, a very famous general. And he says, look, I wanna get revenge. I'm gonna work with you. And Musa, you know, at first he's a little bit hesitant. He's like, do I really wanna work with Don Julian? We've been enemies for so long. He could be tricking me. Why would he betray the Spanish and work with us? It doesn't really make any sense. But then, one of his generals, a man by the name of Tariq, one of Musa's generals, that is, says, let me go see for myself. Let me go on a scouting voyage. Give me 70 strong men. We'll go up the coast of Spain and see what it's all about. Now, Tariq, he was a tough, tall, battle-hardened Arab. I believe he came from Syria. And he only had one eye. And because he only had one eye, the other one had been knifed out with a scimitar, or I guess scimitared out with a scimitar. Is it scimitar or scimitar? Beautiful blue flowers. Love these blue purple flowers. Anyway, they called him one eyed Tariq or Tariq el Tuerto, as he's known in the Spanish chronicles. And Tariq el Tuerto, he goes up along the coast, lands in Andalusia near Cadiz, and he sees that, yeah, this place is ripe for the taking. What's the difference between a drunk Spaniard and an expat? One's red British and looks like a lobster, the other one's an expat. Some of the beautiful white lifeguard stands of Rincon. So El Tuerto Tariq, he takes over about 12,000 men and they make landing in Tarifa, which is called Tarifa because of Tariq. And that's not the only thing he names because soon he sets up his camp, he sets up his base at a rock known as Calpe. And the rock, you can see basically into modern day Morocco from the rock because the rock is a huge rock. And him being the arrogant son of a bitch that he was, he names it Jibal Tariq, or Mount Tariq. And Mount Tariq, Jibal Tariq, what do you think it gets called? A thousand years later, Gibraltar. Jibal Tariq, Gibraltar. Look at the Rinconian, so sportive, so active, and at the same time, so willing to have a little bit of a chill. Wow, beautiful, beautiful people. When the force of Moors and Arabs and Muslims and collected forces, the 12,000 strong, when they made landing into Spain, Tariq, he had all the boats burnt while the soldiers slept. And they said, what are we gonna do? What if we have to retreat? What if we have to go home? And Tariq, what does he respond? Tariq says, home, this is your home. Go win it. 
And it's a great sentiment. I mean, burn the boats. No plan for retreat. What other choice do you have? But the troops, they're still a little skittish. So Tariq, he pays a local woman, a local Iberian. And he tells her to relay a prophecy. And she relays the prophecy and she says, when I was a young girl, we had a prophet come to the village. And the prophet said that one day a man would come to conquer us and his right arm would be longer than his left and he would have a mole on his right shoulder. Lo and behold, Tariq takes off his shirt, right arm longer than the left, mole on the right shoulder. Something tells me that the woman knew ahead of time, but what are you gonna do? Now the troops, they're encouraged. The prophecy's coming true. This is a superstitious lot. These recently converted Arabic Muslims. We're talking two or three or four generations after the time of Mohammed. Alma Playa. I don't think it means Apple Beach. Alma being Apple in Hungarian, but may as well give it a go. Got a nice little dog. His name is Max. And the cute little Estrella Galicia. This is from the north from Galicia. An old part of the Visigothic Kingdom, to be sure. And all on the loose for a time. But the Muslims, the Moors, they never really did well up north. Salud. So now Roderick, with his Moors and his Arabs, they're fired up, they're ready to go. They've heard the prophecy, the boats are burned, it's time to make battle. And they do make battle against the Odomir, who is a very brave and valiant Visigoth. And the Moors win. The Odomir doesn't die. He regroups, he retreats, and he gets word out to Roderick. This is a bigger threat than we thought. The Moors, they're vicious, and they will be victorious if we do not make preparations immediately for reinforcements. What do we have here? What we have here is padel. It's like a national sport in Spain. Kind of like tennis. Weird form of tennis. But the people love it. So now Roderick's getting really, really nervous. Not only does he have a guilty as fuck of a conscience because of what he did to Florinda, but just before the Muslims came in to invade, Roderick was a very, very silly boy. Dos. Gracias. So why was Roderick such a silly little boy? Hold your horses. I'm about to tell you. Anyway, thousands of years ago, Hercules had this big tower and he put a lock on it and he said that every future king should put a lock on the tower. And thus they did. Every king, every king that ruled over the land that encompassed Toledo had put another lock onto the tower and it was never to be opened. Even Julius Caesar, that arrogant son of a bitch, when he was in charge of Toledo, he put a lock on the tower. But Roderick thought he was better than everyone. He had to see what was inside. He goes in, bada boom, bada bing. What does he see? He sees a vision that men on turbans with scimitars, scimitars, the Muslims, the Moors, he doesn't know who they are yet, but he sees that they are gonna come in and invade. So when he hears that Theodemir had lost so grievously at the battles, initially against the Moors, and that the Moors had started to pillage and rave and reap and rape all around his provinces in Spain, well, Roderick, <laughs> not only does he have a guilty conscience, but he believes that this prophecy is coming true. Nonetheless, he digs deep. He digs so deep into his lustful, slothful, lazy ass, and he finds the old battle-hardened Gothic vigor that once he knew. So Roderick gathers up his forces and Don Julian, the brave battle-hardened veteran of Northwest Africa, where he's repelled the Arabs many times before, he promises Roderick that everything's gonna be okay because Roderick does not know that he's in cahoots with the Muslims himself. And Julian's got Bishop Opas, the Bishop of Seville, who happened to be the brother of the old King Wittizia, who hated Roderick and wanted to install his nephews, Evan and Cisaberto on the throne. But you know, these are a lot of little details that are unimportant. The main moral of the story is that Roderick is heading down with the flower of the nobility, with all of his forces that he can muster, with all of the Visigothic strength. And they're heading down and they meet the Moors at an encampment. They meet Tariq el Tuerto, Tariq the One-Eyed, near the river of Guadalete. Oh look, here we are, back where we began. Liceo Playa. 
My hometown local. I never had a local pub quite like this. Pardon, pardon. All right, now we're in business. Here's my old seat. There's Mr. Cruz Campo, just as I left him a couple hours back before all of this malarkey took place. So it's the day of the battle on the Guadalete. And first day, day one, there's a little skirmish, a little testing of sorts. The two camps, they're opposed, split in between by the river. And Tariq sends out a force, Roderick sends out a force, utter annihilation, skirmish does not go well for the Visigoths. Uh-oh, day two, another skirmish. Again, same story, Visigoths get basically, essentially, and fundamentally slaughtered. Day two, slaughtered again. Day three, that's gonna be the day of the main battle. And Roderick, he musters up all the courage that he possibly can. He does not want to lose this kingdom. He does not want to be the Visigothic leader that surrenders to the invading infidel, to the heretics of the Muslim faith. Back then, the Visigothic kings, they were real fans of jewels and glory and bedazzlement and splendor. And so Roderick, he gets all pranced up, all ponied up with his diamond studded sandals, his royal scepter. But you know, with all the pretensions aside, he does put on a brave performance. And he goes and they battle and it's Tariq and it's Roderick and it's Theodemir and Polistes and all the other names that you can imagine. And for a while, the battle's pretty even. It looks like the Visigoths are actually in the thing. Some of the forces of Tariq El Tuerto, they start to run back and retreat. They're nervous. They didn't realize that the Visigoths could put up such a fight. But lo and behold, what happens? Don Julian, the traitor, Bishop Opas, the traitor, all of the forces that they've assembled to turn coats against Roderick, take out their knives and start to fight against their former brethren. And now confusion reigns out amongst the camp. And next thing you know, El Tuerto, he's coming into the foray and he says, look at me, soldiers, this is how you be brave. And he, the battle-hardened man himself, the one-eyed general, he comes in and he starts slaying Christians and the Christians turn on Christians. Next thing you know, it's a bloodbath, a massacre. Just like days one and two of the skirmishing, the Muslims, they slaughter and eviscerate. And Roderick, he flees for the hills. It's unknown whether or not he actually died. Many sources seem to suggest that he may have escaped and lived out the rest of his life as a hermit. Nonetheless, El Tuerto has won, and they get a head, any head, or any head will do. Put some jewels on it, send it back to the Caliph, say it's Don Roderick, the king is dead, and what do you know? Now it's time to conquer the rest of Al-Andalus. But Musa, if you remember Musa, he was the original man that decided to go in and invade and sent his general El Tuerto. He's getting a little bit jealous because he thought he was going to be the one that came in and conquered. And now it looks like this Moor, this Moor El Tuerto, who burnt all the boats, is going to get all the credit. And he's not too happy about that. But that's a story for next time. As well as the fate of Don Julian and his daughter Florinda and the rest of the characters in this epic tale of conquest and subjugation and eventual Moorish glory. Salud. Or as the Moors would say, we don't drink because we're Muslim. But I think they probably did drink. To be perfectly honest with you. Okay, well, that's a wrap on the Chiringuito challenge and the conquest of the Moor into Spain. <laughs> Got a little lost there in the story. A little heated up by the sun. We got some Easter Island statues here at Liceo Playa. But we met a lot of people. We had a lot of fun. We learned a little bit of history. And now, what do you know? I'm done. All right, well, we're about to take off and depart. But before we leave, I would just like to say a quick thank you to our wonderful accommodation in this beautiful urbanization. 
And that is da, 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 the House of the Salty Orange. Number 13, Kale Lanzarote. Nice little front patio, orange tree. Love to sit there. Beautiful Andalusian tiles. Nice, spacious living room, big screen TV. And the coup de gras, the back patio. A great place for some sun. Upstairs bedrooms, spacious. Almost forgot my charging cord.